Good morning and welcome back to the drapery shop. I'm going to show you how I tabled a very long, very wide drapery with eight widths of fabric. Actually, it wasn't very long for the finish length. It was only 93 inches, which I'm going to show you here on the work order. Um, but it was eight widths wide, which makes the drapery very heavy combined with black outlining. So this was a one-way left drapery with black outlining. The finish width is 155 and a half with a big return to allow room for a sheer drapery underneath. This is the overdrape. So when we say one-way left, that means everything stacks on the left. And we did two finger Euro pleats, top tack, four inch buckram, half inch pin setting, four inch hem, this was my calculation on pleats and spaces. Eight cuts at 113. This is the blackout cuts and finish width, pleat to pleat. I like to add two inches to my finish width to make sure we have enough ease. And then that's where we work that into the pleats and spaces, which I did go a little bit bigger than that even, but it's such a big drapery that the spaces worked out better with a little bit more ease than the two inches. We've already gone over step one is cutting. Step two was piecing the fabric together at the sewing machine. Step three was putting in the blind hem of the base fabric. And now step four is tabling the black outlining to the face fabric and getting the whole drapery together to the length with the side hems in it and the top turned for the header turned at the 93 inch finish length. So I'm gonna start by putting the fabric on the table. And I always like to start on the leading edge. With the face fabric facing down, you have to think of it a little bit backwards. So here's a sketch of the window. This is a really big sliding door that kind of butts up to the wall on the right. So that's why the whole drapery has to stack to the left. And there is a tiny bit of wall space over here, but thankfully we have some wall space. So that's why the whole drapery is gonna stack to the left. So when you start tabling, you have to envision the way the drapery is going to function. And then, so the leading edge would be over here. And so we wanna start with the leading edge when we're tabling. Looking at the drapery, the leading edge is on the right. So when you table, you'll flip that over so it's face down and you'll actually start on the left. It feels like it's on the left, but it's upside down. So it's really the right, but you're gonna lay it face down and start on the left side of the table. So that's where we are here in the video and I'm getting the fabric all smoothed out and pinning the hem that's already been blind stitched at the 93 inch line. And I'm putting in pins at an angle so that once I smooth all the fabric with my yardstick, then the fabric will stay right at that line where I have pinned it. It's important to make sure the fabric stays on the line and that your leading edge salvage is also lined up on a line perpendicular to your finish line. That will keep the whole drape square. And then your seam, the first seam that you have on the table, you also wanna make sure that that is perpendicular to your finish length which is gonna be parallel to your leading edge. So all of these things that you can use as indica indicators for squareness will help keep the drapery on the table as square as possible. And then when you go to put your lining on top, try not to move the fabric on the, on the table and just get it situated. The first width is the hardest because that eight width piece of black outlining is really bulky and heavy and stiff. So you want to get it situated to where it's not going to move the fabric underneath, but then you want to start pinning it also at the bottom at the finished length, also with the pins at an angle, and then line up your seams either directly on top of each other or slightly off of each other so that's not so bulky. That's typically what I do is put it just right next to the other one. Um, and then as you go, they might be a little bit more off and a little bit more off unless you carefully planned your lining seams with your face fabric seams, which is another way to go.
and I'm starting the lining about half an inch to three quarters of an inch above the finish length. So you'll see your face fabric about half an inch or three quarters of an inch at the bottom. And then once all of that is really smooth and you're happy with how it's laying, then you're gonna turn over your side hem at the leading edge and pin it to the three inch line. And you wanna make sure that your blackout lining is tucked all the way into that crease and then press that whole side hem. And I had cut off the selvage, so I have a nice straight three inches folded over and I'm pressing and steaming to get a nice crease into that side hem. And then I'm gonna just barely cut off the extra blackout just underneath the inside of that three inch side hem. Sometimes if you don't have enough to complete the whole three inches with the lining, that's okay. But if you have enough to turn over the full three inch, I like to just leave it all in there and maybe just cut it slightly inside so that it doesn't interrupt the fold once you fold it in. So you're gonna double that three inch side hem and get the raw edges all the way tucked in, pin that in place and then steam it. And whenever I'm making a drapery with black outlining, I like to hand stitch the side hems rather than putting that through the blind hemmer. Before I move this width to the next one, I will take the time to hand stitch that just to get that done and don't have to come back to it or leave pins in it. And then you wanna put a weight in your corner. You can tuck it inside the pocket. And then when you're hand stitching, you don't really wanna see any of your thread. You want a clean, invisible stitch, almost like you would get at the blind hemmer where you don't see it through the front. And with hand stitching, it can be even more invisible on the back than the blind hemmer. Wherever my thread is coming out, that's where I'm also going in and then through the lining only. And my stitches are maybe half an inch long. That is a personal preference. You can vary your hand stitching. But the main thing is you wanna have it consistent and neat and as invisible as possible. And then we get to the top of the drape where you can turn over your header now. And I have more than I need, which is eight inches. Eight inches is how much I need for the double four inch header. So I have a couple inches extra and I'm gonna leave all that extra on there until I have the whole drapery tabled. So right now I'm just gonna turn it over at the zero line and pin it into place and make sure the lining is tucked all the way up into there too. And then press that line, press and steam to really get that line secure at the zero line. And at the very, very corner, I like to leave a hair extra so that the side hem does not pull that leading edge up off the floor. On each end of typically any drape I make, I'm gonna have a little extra, either a 16th of an inch or an eighth of an inch, depending on the fabric, just at the corner. And then I taper that in, you know, within the first couple of inches. And that seems to do the trick. And then before you move your fabric over and to work on with number two, you're gonna take off the pins at the bottom and then start pinning all, only along the seam of the blackout. So because this is blackout lining, we don't wanna put pins through the body of the drape, only at the seams of the blackout because that part has already been punctured by sewing it together. So if you put a few more pins in there, those pins won't, won't create any new holes. And if you put your pins along the side of the table to hold your fabrics together anywhere else, then you're gonna create new pinholes where the light will shine through those pinholes. So try to go only through the seam. And then once you have that line of pins secure in your seam, then you can move it over and start getting the second width situated, which is also a little bit difficult, you know, from width one to width number two, because you're, you're still working with so much fabric that is on the floor. Once you get to width number six and seven, it's not as difficult. So try to try your best to um, get all of that extra weight off the floor to get width number two onto the table and then start pinning 
the hem again, just like you did on with number one, pin that to your finished length line with the pins at an angle. And then I like to press the hem just to get it flat. You'll have to work from one side of the table to the other. So you're gonna get your steps in walking around the table. And I don't worry so much about the lining until I get the face fabric situated. And again, that lining is heavy on top. So I'm mostly concerned with getting the face fabric lined up at the line. So at my finish length of 93. And then also I made sure that the pin line from the first seam is lined up on, a, on an obvious line. So I'm on the yellow line on the left side of the table, lining up the, the pins at the bottom and the top, kind of drawing an invisible line through the table to make sure I'm perpendicular with that seam. And then when I get to the face fabric seam of width number two, then I can also check that that line lines up somewhere on the bottom and the same line on the top. So you can use your grid and count over from a dark line or count over from your yellow line. Um, if you don't have lines on your table, kind of draw an imaginary line to just to see if that new seam that you're getting situated is parallel to the edge of the table is basically what you're doing because every time you move a new width onto the table, it has to be square. Especially when you're doing a, a huge panel like this one, eight widths. By the time you get to the last width, if each one continues to be slightly off parallel, then the whole drapery by the end is gonna be really askew. So this step is important, and then I'm pressing that seam just as another way to check that it's straight. And also I like to get the seam as flat as possible. Once you're ready with the lining, you can move that over and get it situated again where the bottom is slightly up above the finish length of the face fabric. So one half to three quarters of an inch above the face fabric. Get all of the extra slack smoothed out and you can check your pins from your first width at the seams to see that all the fabric is smoothed underneath and to the side. And this definitely takes a little bit of practice, you know, especially going to an eight width panel. When you're dealing with two widths and three widths, it's definitely a lot easier. You'll get from one end to the other a lot quicker. So it might seem daunting at first, but you just take one at a time, get all that fabric smoothed out. The wooden yardstick is a really big help in smoothing out all the excess fabric, getting all the air out of it, making sure that the bottom layer is also nice and smooth underneath the blackout, because if it's not, it could end up longer than necessary once you hang it. So that's why the sweeping is important. And then eventually, once you work in all of the pins and get this, the bottom hem situated and keep getting the extra wrinkles out, smooth it out. Eventually everything gets nice and smooth and then you can go back to the top and now you don't have to worry about a side hem. This width two to width seven are a little bit easier just because there's no side hem to contend with. So now you just wanna go to the top and get all of the lining situated all the way up to that fold line where you're gonna press at the zero line. Press it, steam it, get it all set, and then put the pins in it. We're not gonna cut it yet. We're just gonna pin it and then keep going to the next width and the next and the next. So after pinning the top at the zero line, press it and pin it. Then you will go back to your new seam seam number two for the black outlining and r run another row of pins down that seam. 
before you're ready to move over to seam or over to width number three. And I try to do this pinning through the blackout seams through the through all the layers. In this case, there's two. Sometimes there's three if you have inner lining. But I try to do this um, without having my left hand under the fabric because there's so much fabric to work with. So if you can find a way to get used to pinning through all those layers just with your one hand, and then you can use your left hand to kind of help push that pin through but only from the front. Try not to have to go through the back with your second hand. And so now pick up all the heavy parts that are on the floor to try to get with number three up on the table. And then once you get it all up there, again, start with pinning the bottom. You always wanna start with the bottom and then line up your seam that you had previously pinned, line that up on a line Check that it's on the same line on the top and bottom. And then go to the other side, line up the finish length, pin, press, Now we have a bird's eye view. And I'm gonna get the seam of the face fabric lined up on the table so it's parallel with the edge of the table. And again, if you have a grid on your table, you can check that the seam is on the same line at the bottom and the top of the drape. And if you don't have a grid, you can make sure that it's parallel with your table. You could even check measure from the edge of the table over to the seam in a bunch of spots to make sure you're square. And if both of your seams, the new one that you're getting situated and the one that you have already tabled, because with every width that you're tabling, you'll have two seams up on the table. The one that you have already pinned, and then the new one that you're getting up onto the table. You should have two seams to work on to look and make sure that everything is perpendicular and parallel and square. The only time you don't is when you have, you're working on the first width and the last width, then you only have one seam up on the table. So all of the widths that are in the middle, you'll have two seams to help you get the fabric all nice and square. And those are all reference points to make sure that your fabric is being tabled properly so that the drapery will hang straight. That's the whole purpose of tabling. It, besides getting the finish length put into place is it everything is square. You'll probably get tired of hearing me say that and hopefully it just will make sense that that's the whole purpose for the tabling and all the lines on the table. Because basically a drapery is straight lines. And if you can keep all the lines straight, you're gonna have a really beautiful drapery that hangs properly. So again, it's repetition. Once you get the fabric all situated at the bottom and the seams are all perpendicular and parallel, then turn over your header, press it and pin it into place, pin your new seam that's already 
tabled and then move it over and do it again. And here's, here's the pinning part that I was trying to explain where if you can do this without putting your left hand under the fabric, it'll be faster and easier because it's so much fabric to reach under. And then pick up the extra off the floor before you go to the other side to try to pull it up. If you try to pull it up all from one side, it's a little bit too heavy and sometimes damaging to the fabric. You could stretch it out of place depending on some fabrics are kind of loosely woven that if you pull on that much fabric you could really stretch it and damage it so i lost track of how many widths we have done so far but we're we're getting there getting to the other side but you can see i'm still repeating each step the same in the same order with every width getting the bottom pinned pin those pins at an angle so that when you sweep everything and get everything smooth, it doesn't come off of your finish line. And there, there is a tool that you can use to clamp onto the table. The tool helps you clamp the fabric to the table rather than pinning the fabric to the table. I just never really enjoyed using that tool, so I don't, I don't use that method. But there is, a, there is such a thing if you wanted to investigate that. Um, it used to be called a size master, but I don't think they have that anymore. I think it's called something else. And you can tell I'm getting a little bit closer to the end because the amount of black outlining that's on the table is less and less as I'm adjusting and getting the next width situated. We're gonna have a very extended version of this video on Patreon. So if you wanted to go see extra explanation and extra long footage of this process to check out Patreon and lots of other extended videos of other topics like Roman shades and ripple fold and cornices and stuff like that. So besides extra cuts on Patreon, you could also get tips and tricks videos fun group chat that we do once a month. And I do have a double three inch hem at the bottom of the black outlining. So putting the pins through the black outlining hem doesn't concern me with the pin holes. It's only where it's one layer of blackout and you don't wanna put your pins down the side of the table anywhere but through the seam. But when, when I'm putting the pins through the hem at the blackout, the sunlight's not gonna go through three layers of blackout, plus there's a double four inch hem of the face fabric. So between the face fabric hem and the blackout hem, those pinholes I'm not worried about. Don't forget to check that your finish length line is still true and hasn't shifted because the table lines can shift easily over time, especially if you're vacuuming your table and if you're moving like big cornices around that kind of cling to the to the canvas on the table. So before tabling any drapery, especially a big one like this, take out a tape measure and check that your line is correct and accurate. And if it's off a little bit, draw a new line. I have lots of freshly drawn pencil lines on my table just because of how it shifts and you definitely don't want to table a whole draper like that and then realize that your line is a little bit off. So now we're almost to the end. Okay, here we go. So this is the return. And I'm not gonna just cut off the selvage because at this point, the fabric is a little bit jagged on the edge. So if I cut off the selvage, I would not have a straight line. And, and it's not a horribly crooked line, but the fabric is a little bit uh, wavy on this side of the selvage. So I'm only gonna fold over a, a little bit more than three inches and then I'm gonna press that line 
and then draw a line at three inches. Which sometimes I do that in the beginning of the drapery too, like on the leading edge of this one. I could have done this way also, but that selvage was very straight. So I just cut it off at the selvage line and then fold it over three inches. But on this side, the selvage is much wavier. So I don't want to cut it off and still have a wavy line. Rather than that, I'm folding over more than three inches so that I can draw a straight three inch line and cut off the extra. And after tabling eight widths of fabric, having only this much of a jagged line is really good. And then we fold over the three inch hem. So we're left with a double one and a half inch hem. And note also I cut through the black outlining at the same place and I'm just folding the whole thing over because it was a nice clean cut and everything's gonna fold and lay really nicely. Make sure it's tucked all the way into the fold and then press that and then I'll hand stitch that. Don't forget the weight in the corner. And then after this step is when I would take the whole eight widths and turn it the long way on the table so that I can work on the header all at once, even though it's not all gonna fit one in one stretch, but it's gonna be a lot less than eight times. And this is where we're gonna end the video for this step because this is completing eight widths of tabling, getting the whole drape to length and getting the header folded over. So the next step would be to cut down the header to eight inch and then put the buckram in and then figure the pleats and spaces. So we'll do another video with figuring the math and pinning the pleats and spaces. Hand stitching the return is gonna complete the tabling of this eight width panel. Thanks for watching. Check out Patreon if you haven't yet and comment on this video if you have any questions and give a like and subscribe. Uh, YouTube videos are free and if you subscribe, you can um, get a little reminder when a new one comes out so that you don't miss any new videos.